Welcome back, everybody. How you doing tonight? Um, I got a pretty cool opening, I think. So, believe it or not, the most anticipated kind of opening I've been looking forward to doing here recently is actually Core 2020. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, the core sets usually are not much value uh, compared to the expansions, but this Core 2020 set is unbelievable. Uh, I mean, there's commons in here, like not just one, but several commons worth a couple dollars a piece. There's uncommons in here worth a bunch of money. Not to mention the rares and mythics are all like pretty well good hits. I mean, not all of them, but there's a good chunk of rares and mythics that are good hits. There's a, and there's a bunch of commons and uncommons that are a few bucks a piece. I mean, it's crazy. So I picked up 40 packs uh, from the same seller. If you've been watching my videos that I got a bunch of these other 40 pack bundles from that. Uh, so I gotten uh, some Dominaria. Didn't have too great a luck in the Dominaria because I figured they were just like search packs. Like they opened the box, took the good cards. And then uh, once they pulled like the, the, the big money cards, they just threw the rest of the packs in a bundle to sell on eBay. But from what he told me uh, the last time when I got the Shadows of Innistrad bundle, he said that they were uh, the like two packs you get in the Planeswalkers decks. They open a lot of Planeswalkers decks at his store, and they pull the packs out. And they just sell the packs in a bundle. So that's where these are supposed to be from, is the Planeswalker decks. Uh, and the Innistrad video, I got just an unbelievable amount of value in, in those 40 packs. Uh, I was getting a repetition of all the good cards, which is awesome. So I'm hoping this Core 2020 might kind of do the same thing. So we're going to open 40 packs of Core 2020 right now. So I hope you guys are, are nice and comfy seated and stuff so we can uh, you know, kind of dig through these and... Uh, we gotta check out some of the commons too. If we can get the packs open. Oh, geez. The first pack is not opening easily. All right, I don't know where I'm gonna put the packs. I guess I'm just gonna throw them on the floor, let Cat play with them until I can pick them up. All right, so, <laughs> so uh, the main kind of commons we're looking for are the Woodland Mystic, which is like a $3 card according to my price list. Um, Disentomb, Prized Unicorn, Bristling Boar, a rubber Belt Recluse, Phantom Warrior, Oaken Form, Ironclad Cavold, <laughs> Frilled Sandwalla, uh, Snapping Drake. These are all common showing a $2 and up price list, uh, or $2 and up price on the price list. Uh, the uncommons we're looking for is Twin Blade Paladin, and uh, the other ones are Thirsting Bloodlord, Volcanic Dragon, and Veil of Summer. Veil of Summer being the most expensive of them. So. I'm kind of not even sure if I should just run through the commons like I usually do, or if we just kind of pay attention to those a little bit more. So I think we'll might make this a little bit longer video here. Uh, Pattern Matcher, Veil of Summer. There we go. There's our first hit right there. So I don't know if I got enough room on here. <laughs> I'm gonna, I might be running out of room on, on here because uh, hopefully in 40 packs we're going to get a lot of good stuff like that. And Temple of Silence, we already got uh, one of the rare lands. So the rear lands are uh, not terribly valuable in this set, but they're not bad either. Um, so, you know, they're, they they're, they do enter the battlefield tap, but at least you can scry. So, second so bearing, oh, and we got a foil. We got a foil uh, uncommon already. First pack, Flying Haste, Lightning Stormkin. Uh, cool, cool uncommon. Uh, the uncommon itself isn't worth a lot, so I'm not sure if the foil is worth much, but we'll kind of stack that over there in our foil section. All right, pack two. So already we've got a foil and a, a good uncommon hit. So this should be pretty crazy opening, I hope. So let me see. What do you guys think of the Core 2020? I mean, value-wise, I just I, I think the value is kind of off the charts on this set. Everything I've opened so far from Core 2020, I've made money on. I mean, it's just not even a, not even a question. Oh, first Mythic. Omnath, Locus of the Royal. Uh, I don't think he's one of the bigger ones. Uh, quick look over the price list. No, I don't think he's one of the bigger ones. I think for our Mythics, uh, mainly in this set, it's the Planeswalkers and then the uh, the Cavaliers are kind of bigger ones. Oh, and another foil. Oh, and a Chandra emblem. Look at that. So that's nice. Uh, we did get a stupid mountain here. I guess I'll split up the, the 
common dual ends and the common uh, or the common dual ends and the uh, regular lens. Uh, but we did get an emblem. That's cool. So another foil. Uncommon. Second pack, second foil uncommon. So I'm hoping this is going to turn out like that Shadows of Innistar video because <laughs> uh, that was that was that was pretty good value for for a bunch of random packs that I got a good deal on. Uh, these I paid about the same uh, for 40 packs that I would have paid for a box. I think I paid like I don't remember like 84 or something like that, 80, 85 for the for the for the 40 packs. So not bad at all. Uh, Diamond Knight, Mask of Immolation, Scholar of the Ages, and Drawn from Dreams. Uh, this one I think is kind of a little undervalued. Uh, it's a pretty cool card. Uh, just so you, you can see there, look at the top seven cards of your library. Put two of them into your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library in, any random, in a random order. So, I mean, for four mana, that's not bad at all. Pull, you know, basically scry the top seven at one time and put two of them in your hand. I mean, that's pretty awesome, for, if you ask me. Ooh, and that really cool elemental token. I love the artwork on that one. So, not off to a shabby start. Uh, it's not a big value rare, but I think it probably should be more value than it actually is. These packs are not open and easy, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, all right, you know, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to say all of them, all the commons. I don't want to run through the commons, but I'm, I am kind of going through them a little bit slow to see if we get any of the bigger hits. So that's the Hammer, Unchained Berserker, Overcome, and Steel Overseer. So not much, not much on that one. I'm gonna try and burn through these as quick as I can. Just try and, uh, so we can kind of look for, for some of the, the good commons and stuff. Now, most likely they're not going to be as, as common as the standard commons would be. So, uh, Corpse Knight, Chandra Spitfire, and Flood of Tears. What a tears. I was thinking maybe that one was a decent, decent pull, but I'm not seeing on the price list. So, an Evolving Wilds and another Elemental token. That's nice. All right. So, this is actually four packs more than a full box. So, but they're all from random Planeswalker decks and stuff. So, who knows what we're going to get? Oh, I see something shiny back there. Uh, just trying to see if there's anything good in the comments here. Rule of Law, Cryptic Caves, Herald of the Sun, and oh, a Chandra Mythic. Nice. Chandra is the second most valuable card in this set. So that's a good Mythic hit. And I, I know there's a foil in here and an Evolving Wilds. Oh, just foil, foil planes, but still, it's a foil. We'll count it. All right. So yeah, what do you guys think about this core set? I mean, I've never seen a core set like this. Uh, in all the years that I've been playing. I mean, I missed quite a few, so I might have missed a cool core set or two, but frankly, I'm pretty pretty surprised at the value in this core set, the like core 2020. Um, pretty shocking, actually. Shifting Ceratops. Can't be countered. I do love the can't be countered ones. All right, and another cheap dual land that comes into play tapped. At least it gives you a life. It's like wizards giving you a little, you know, a little handout for the for the boning on the uh, coming in a blade tap thing. Oh, these packs are well constructed, that's for sure. They're not easy to get into. All right. Um, yeah, I haven't actually uh, drafted this set at all yet. I don't think, I think people just like drafting the, the expansions. I don't think they like drafting the core set, but I think it would be a pretty good drafting set. Bag of holding. You gotta, gotta have your bag of holding or else you can't hold things. In your bag. Of holding. Anyways, so, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I was never big on on core sets really too much. Uh, even though I started it, the release of Revised, which was <laughs> arguably a really good core set. Uh, I had good. I, I had, you know, I liked Revised when it came out. I was really disappointed with Fourth Edition. I thought that was kind of the start of the downfall of the core sets. And there's a non-foil of our Lightning Stormkin, Thrashing Brontodon, and Cavalier of Flame. Nice, another Mythic hit, and it's another good one. I think the Cavalier of Flame is the second most valuable of the Cavaliers, the Cavalier of Knight being the most valuable. So, can't argue with that. Another good money card. It just seems like every time I open a pack of Core 2020, I get something worth something, you know? I'm quite... 
like I said, quite impressed by this core set. I think uh, Wizards really kind of, you know, I, 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 you know, have my fair share of opinions about Wizards and how they do things, but this they did really good on. Gotta admit. Another Lightning Storm can. Uh, Captivating Gar and Dread Presence. And I did see something foily back here. Dread Presence, I don't think, is uh, much of anything. But what's our foil? Oh, a foil rare. Not a good rare, but it's a foil rare. It's the Graft Digger's Cage. Creatures and uh, Creature cards in graveyards and libraries can't enter the battlefield. Players can't cast spells from graveyards or libraries. What the? It's one drop. Creature cards in graveyards and libraries can't enter the battlefield. So apparently once you drop this, you can only play from your hand. Weird. That is a, that's a weird card. What do you guys think of that card? <laughs> Have you stacked that? Has it seen much play? It's not on the value list, I don't think. So I don't think it sees a whole lot of play. I mean, that's basically though the card that when you get the perfect hand and you know you're going to win, you just throw that out there and I guess they can't do anything about it if they don't have it in their hand. But that's weird. Shock. Good old shock. Um, so I'm not seeing any of the any of the commons that were high up on the value list yet. So that's kind of weird. She's in the growth. Blood-soaked altar. Looming salmon. And uh, now the non-foil craft digger's cage. <laughs> oh, that's so weird how that happens. It seems like every time I open a foil rare, I'll get that rare in the next pack. <laughs> it's so weird. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, really cool artwork on the, the elemental bird there. Nice little token. Sorry, I get excited about tokens because, you know, we didn't have tokens last time I played. We had to, like, literally just draw on, a, on an old mountain or something what card we were making a token out of there. So, <laughs> the tokens are actually pretty cool. Uh, and I like the fact that uh, some of the sets, like this one, they put a token in every pack. That's awesome. This one thrown, I think they started putting tokens in all the packs and just putting the ads on the back of the tokens now. So, that's good. Uh, some of the sets would put ads, and then every like third pack you get a token. That was lame. Um, Planner cleansing, destroy all non-land permanents. Good old board wipe. Oh, and a foil rare again. A Cavalier of Dawn foil rare. It's the least least valuable of all the Cavaliers, but it's still a couple bucks. So I imagine the foils probably a few bucks. So nice, another foil rare. That's what I like about these these packs that are just from random like decks and stuff is <laughs> you get all kinds of weird kind of pulls in them because there's no uh it's not like a box so you're not limited to the box kind of shift to paradise i'm surprised that's not worth a little bit more that's a cool cool card um i'm just you know the boxes the boxes pretty much stick to these kind of patterns and you can you can pretty much guess i'm gonna get so many mythics i'm gonna get so many uh, foils, and I'm gonna get one foil rare, maybe two on a, on a, on a strange day, you know, but, uh, Wake Root Elemental, these, these just kind of packs of, just random, or lots of random packs that came out of different decks and stuff, there's no telling what you're gonna get, <laughs> you know, obviously it's true, you could get really hosed and get all just total garbage in them as well, but, you know, I mean, there is a oh, Leafkin Druid, I think. Is that one of our uh, commons that's worth a little bit? No, no I'm not going to bother looking right now. It's a cool card, though. Um, if you control four or more creatures, you get to add two green instead of just adding one green. It is a zero three, which I like. Uh, Land of War Elves, one of my favorite cards in, in history. One drop, one one, that adds a green man to your mana pool, but they are very weak. You know, one little, one damage to all creatures, and all your elves are gone. There goes your mana curve. So, oh, Rising Reef. I think uh, I think this one might be coming up a little bit, even though it's uncommon. I think it might be hitting that dollar two dollar range because uh, it's really cool uncommon. Uh, I know I see it do, getting a lot of play on Arena right now, so I have a feeling this one's probably going to go up a little as people start building those decks around them. So, oh, and another Cavalier of Flame. <laughs> see, that's that's what I'm talking about. I mean, these these kind of random random uh, packs. You get, I got two Cavaliers of Flames. You wouldn't get that in a regular box. I mean, well, maybe Wizards kind of weird with their stuff. And another foil, an Angelic Gift. So, just a common foil, but still, another foil. Um, but yeah, two Cavaliers of Flames, a Chandra already. So we are just kind of killing it, and we're not even a third, well, we're about a third of the way through, because I had uh, 40 packs, so 
We're about a third of the way through now. Um, oops, I keep forgetting about these, to look for these good commons. Um, nope. I'm not seeing too many of the commons that are saying, I, I'm wondering if some of those commons that are on my price list are just in, they're just the deck specific ones and the Planeswalker decks maybe. And Starfield Mystic. So nothing, nothing too crazy there, but so I'm wondering, yeah, I'm wondering if some of those comments might be the ones that were uh, exclusive to the Planeswalker decks. Come on, packs open. All right. We'll see. We'll see what we get here. All right. Corpse Knight, Mark of Bolation, Wolf Rider Saddle, and... Temple of Epiphany, one of the rare lands. Another one, is that the same one we got? In like the, oh, Temple of Silence. Okay, so they're all temples. Okay. I mean, they enter the battlefield tap, but they do let you scry one. So, technically, you could kind of say that it, you know, you're putting land into play and then tapping it to scry one. So, it's just a really expensive scry spell, I guess. And a Maniacal Rage common foil. Oh, you can't really see the foiling on that one. There you go. There we go. Just got to get the right angle. <laughs> so, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this set. Have you uh, gotten any of the core 2020? Are you investing in it? Are you opening it? Let me know what you're, let me know what's going on there. I do plan on picking up several boxes over the next few months and uh, probably, probably opening some and sitting on some. Because um, I love opening packs. Shifting Ceratops. Oh, that can't be counter. I think we got one of those earlier. Oh, and another foil rare, a dread presence. Look at that. So that's our third foil rare so far. So, like I said, these uh, these random uh, lots from the from the Planeswalker decks of just random packs, they can they can throw some really wild stuff out here. So, <laughs> all right, let me uh, keep looking through here. Yeah, I'm not seeing any of those commons that are valued high, so I think they might be Planeswalker deck only things. Um, which is probably why these guys open so many Planeswalker decks and put these packs in a, in a thing. Another bag of holding. So, unfortunately, the uh, the repetition, uh, the repeated rares and stuff goes for the bad cards, too, in these. But, but we got, so far, we're, we're doing pretty good. Uh, uh, we haven't made our money back yet, but we're, we're doing pretty good here. So, let's see what happens. Hand over to the, to the fat ladies back there howling. So, Loyal Pegasus, Noxious Grasp, Aether Gust, and Masterful Replication. Uh, I don't think it's uh, worth a whole lot, but it's a cool card, nonetheless. And a Golem Token. That's a really cool artwork on that one. I like it. Yep, still still falling prey, being a sucker to the, to the, to the cool tokens. All right, so I think we can probably stop looking through the the commons because I think it's just the Planeswalker deck commons that are that are the valuable ones here. But I haven't come across any yet. Um, another temple, temple of Epiphany this time, and another foil, reduced to ashes. So we got a, a big old chain of foils up there, and we're only halfway through here. <laughs> keep opening the packs upside down. Because that's what I do, you know? Why do things the right way when you can do it the much more difficult way and cause yourself more more time and trouble, right? This card, I think, is hugely undervalued. A one black, one drop with death touch and lifelink? Come on, why is this not like a $5 uncommon? That's crazy. I'd be stacking that in all the black decks. All right, and a ley line of combustion. Nice, the ley lines are one of my favorite things in this set. Uh, so... I was hoping to pick up a bunch of these ley lines in here, so I know this isn't one of the more valuable ones, but still, I like the ley lines. Um, so I'm gonna put that up there as a hit. I think the ley lines of all the cards in the set might have the most uh, staying power, just because it's it's a really playable card. They're all really playable. I mean, get them in your opening hand and you get to start with them. I mean, that's crazy. For free, free spells. I love free spells. <laughs> uh, Gender Spitfire and Shifting Ceratops. That one's uh, that one's worth a few bucks. I think maybe three, four dollars. There's another good hit. We'll put that up. We're putting our hits in our Mythic pile. Let's not do that. Um, and another foil, a Packmaster foil. That time. 
So have you guys ever bought any of these uh, just bulk lots of packs, not in boxes? Um, I mean, it's a huge gamble. If you don't know the seller, uh, you can probably get taken really bad on these because they, they could be search packs or resealed packs. You got to watch out for reseals. Oh, Kaikar, Wind's Fury Mythic. So Kaikar, I think, is one of the better ones, if I recall. It's hard to remember all these the goofy names on these. Um, well, I'm looking at the price list, and I'm not seeing it, so I guess he's not. They just all look the same, but it is a Mythic hit, nonetheless. Um, and a Demon Token. Our work on that one's kind of lame. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm not seeing any comments, so I imagine it's uh, they're from the uh, they're from the Planeswalker decks. All right, so another Rising Reef. That's a good little hit. Um, another Temple of Malade. Temple of Malade. Uh, Malade's Temple. Uh, I was thinking this one might actually be worth a, a few bucks. I don't see it on the price list though, so I could be wrong. And another foil. Another foil uncommon and Iron Root Warlord. So we got so many foils, we're just pouring over into the uh, <laughs> into the next row over there. <laughs> foils are everywhere, and we're already up to five mythics. So so far, uh, we're doing pretty good. Not complaining at all so far. And I see another foil in here. <laughs> Gee, there's foils there. Um, and a temple of triumph this time. So we got a lot of temples. Anybody need temples? I got lots of temples. Shirley Temples, we got Temples of Miladies, um, <laughs> Moment of Heroism, Common Foil. Still got another 14 packs to go after this one, so still more value to be had out there. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? This Core 2020 just, it never lets me down so far. Um, pretty shocked by it. Another Graph Digger's Cage. So, you know, womp womp. We're going to get some, uh, we're going to get a stack of uh, bulk rares in, in these packs when we do this, too. But that's the, that's the risk you take. Maniacal Rage. Oh, that was, our first, uh, that was our first foil, wasn't it? All right. Thought Distortion. God, look at that. He's twisting that dude's head all up into a little knot. Look at that. That's what, that's what it feels like when I get some of those migraines at work sometimes. Usually a result of people asking me really stupid questions. But, you know. <laughs> Hanged Executioner. How do you hang the Executioner? He's the one doing the hanging. I don't get it. All right. Moving on. And another foil. Might have the masses. Uncommon foil that time. All right. If we could get that uh, Veil of Summer in a foil, that would be awesome. That I'd be stoked about. Or more foil rares. I mean, we already got two. Why stop now? Let's keep going. You know what I mean? Foil rares are good. <laughs> another Manifold Key. That's like our sixth one, I think. Um... What's this? Uh, Mulder Vine Reclamation. A Veil of Summer. Another one. Nice. Speak of it, and then we'll come. Legion's End. Wasn't that a decent hit, I thought? Let me see. I don't see it, but it could just be hard to see. Because I'm using a, a price list that's uh, not one of the ones I normally look at. Apparently, the site I normally look at is redoing all their price lists or something, because they're all zeroed out. So... <laughs> I'm uh, using a different site, and the price list is a little harder to read. It's a little more accurate, actually, comparing it to actual prices, but it's a little harder to read because of the black background here. So, having trouble seeing cards on it. And another temple, Temple of Triumph, and another foil. <laughs> it's like every pack. It's like, oh, here's another temple, here's another foil. Herald of the Sun, uncommon foil. Foils everywhere, man. It's like every other pack has a foil in it. See what we get in this one. Blood Beetle, Meteor Golem, Dragon Mage, and Shared Summons. Yeah, decent little card. A little pricey though. I think a four drop would have been a little, little more reasonable than a five drop. But it does let you search your library for two different creature cards and reveal them, put them in your hand, then shuffle your library for two green and three colorless. So it's not a bad card, just uh, probably a little bit pricey. Just, I mean, you know, years ago, that would have been an awesome card, but there's just a lot more stuff out there doing things like that now. Another Steel Overseer. I think that's our second one of those. All right. 
We're in our last stack here. Jeez, these packs are impossible to open. Wizard's pack construction's gotten pretty good. Seriously, come on, open. Man, are these re-glued or something? <laughs> I mean, they're factory seals. They're just really, really hard to open for some reason. Could just be that I'm really tired because it's been a long couple weeks. I work retail and it's, uh, you know, Christmas time. So <laughs> I'm pretty exhausted. That could be why I can't open the packs. Scheming Symmetry. Uh, choose two target players. Each of them searches their library for a card, then shuffles their library and puts that card on top of it. For one black. In some kind of a multiplayer team format, like Emperor, this would be awesome. <laughs> you, could, you and your teammate could both go grab, a, grab an awesome card. <laughs> um, I still need to... Nobody's asked me yet, but uh, if you're curious, I haven't mentioned it in a little while, but uh, Emperor was my favorite format to play in. If you want me to do a video on how to play that, let me know. So, I'd love to bring that back. Yay, Lotus Field! That's one of the one of the other cards I was really hoping to get a few of. So, uh, Lotus Field, Hexproof, Lotus Field enters the battlefield tapped. When Lotus Field enter, enters the battlefield, you got to sacrifice two lands, but then you tap it to add three mana of any color. So, it's basically a, a Black Lotus. You just got to sack a couple lands, and it comes into play tapped. But it's a, it's a Black Lotus that can't be killed. It's Hexproof. So, it's got some pros and some cons. But I'm going to consider that a really good hit, because I was hoping to get at least one of those. Hopefully, I... You know, if there's one in every pack for the rest of the thing, I would be pretty stoked about that. Because <laughs> that's one I definitely wouldn't mind stacking a lot of. Um, you know, I mean, it sounds like a pretty expensive cost sacrificing two lands. But these days, it's not really hard to get lands back out of the graveyard. And you might actually want to sacrifice those lands. They may be some kind of land you're, you're using for something else and you want to sacrifice them. So... Not a problem. And a Soren, nice. Soren is uh, the third most valuable card in the set. So our mythics are just a very, very good mythics. Very good pulls. And another foil rare. <laughs> That's a third foil rare, locks it on Life Chanter. So I didn't fare so well the first bulk of packs that I got from this guy, cause they were the Dominarias and I, and I, I, I did all right. Uh, but I didn't pull any of the really big cards on the set, which is why I thought he was searching the boxes and then just throwing the excess packs in there. But I got a really good deal on them, so another Rising Reef. So I wasn't too worried about it. But Sephora Skies Blade. Uh, but then that Innistrad box that I got from him, I think I got another bulk too. What was the other bulk I got? I don't know. I'll have to look at my old videos here. Um, I've been opening so many cards, it's all blending together kind of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, I think I got another bulk from that was pretty good, but then that Innistrad thing was just awesome, so I immediately after I opened that, I got online and ordered some more from Flood of Tears, because I saw he had another, another deal on the Core 2020 and then the Yellow Drain, 40 packs of each, so I decided to pick those up, because, uh, of course, Wizards is having a, a shipping problem with them, so I'm not picking up any of those boxes right now, because... Everybody's trying to overcharge for them because Wizards isn't shipping any this month. I can be patient and wait till next month for the packs. Brought back is our rare. And another foil. Uncommon. Sky Knight Vanguard. Foils everywhere. Jeez. Well, um, so I figured I'd pick these 40-pack bundles up and open them on here and see what kind of craziness ensues. And... <laughs> Uh, hope they were like the, uh, the Innistrad packs, which, uh, so far, looking pretty close. Starfield Mystic. Uh, that one wasn't that one decent. Uh, I think that one might be decent. Might be up there a little bit. It's, uh, one white, one colorless. Enchantment spells you cast cost one less to cast. I always love discounted cards. Uh, whenever an enchantment you control is put in the graveyard from the battlefield, put a 1-1 one -one counter on Starfield Mystic. So, 2-drop, two 2-2 two -two with... Uh, not only making your enchantments cheaper, but also gets pumped up when your enchantments go to the graveyard. So, uh, if it's not on the value list, which I'm not really seeing it there, then it should be. Why is that not a couple dollar card? And a foil forest. Yeah, another foil. All right, two packs left. What's in them? What's in the last two packs? We got, uh, looks like a Johnny on one cover and 
that uh, Mu Yingling something on the other cover. <laughs> we'll save the we'll save the lady for last. Save the best for last there. All right. So last two packs. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you're still here, means the world to me. Leave a comment. Let's start some chatting going on. Another temple, the temple of silence. All right. So. Like I said, I really, every comment, like, share, uh, yeah, I need to go to bed. Um, <laughs> I can't even open a booster pack. Definitely need to go to bed, get some sleep. Uh, every, everything you do that helps me grow this channel is just, just hugely appreciated. I can't, you know, words can't express it enough, uh, how much I appreciate all you, all the support here early going. Uh, I've only been doing this for a month and I've already, uh, doing all right. And another Chandra to end it out. <laughs> Uh, this is the Accolade of Flame, though. I think this is the, the cheaper one. Um, yep, this one's the cheaper one. Not worth as much as the other one because it's the rare one, not the Mythic. But still a good hit at the close here. Still got some value on the board. So we'll put that over here. So we got, for our Mythics, we got Soren, the number three card in the set value-wise. We got the Kaikar, nothing big there. We got two Cavalier of Flames, which are awesome. Um, they're probably about a seven, eight dollar card, I think, right now. We got Chandra, who's the second most valuable card in the set, and then we got a an Omnath, Locus of the Royal. So, got four good Mythics and two two other Mythics. Um, so for our big hits, we got the other Chandra. We got the Lotus Field, which I'm awesome. Uh, uh, was awesome. Uh, the Leyline of Combustion and the Shifting Ceratops. But then, geez, the stack of foils is crazy. We got two two Veil of the Summer Uncommons. Not bad. Um, I was hoping for a few more of the, the Uncommon hits there, but God, look at that. Let me kind of get through here real quick and kind of put everything up. I think we might have gotten like, like a couple booster packs of just foils here. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Including Mythics. Oh, that was a Mythic, the Cavalier of Dawn. I forgot about that. I forgot about that one. <laughs> foil. Foil awesomeness. So, for our foils, we got a Foil Mythic, Cavalier of Dawn. Totally forgot about that. We got one, two, three Foil Rares. Dread Presence, Loxodon, Life Chanter, and Graft Digger's Cage. We got one, two. Two, three, four, five, six foil uncommons. One, two, three, four, five foil commons and two foil lands. I mean, <laughs> there's like there's like two packs of just foils plus. I mean, <laughs> that's crazy. So, well, let me know what you guys thought of this video. I uh, let me know what you think of the set. I mean, I think Core Twenty Twenty is the best core set since revised. I'm gonna have to say. I'm gonna go out. On a limb there and say that. And if it wasn't for the dual lands, I think it would be better than Revise. Because Revise, really, the only... Well, I mean, you got Wheel of Fortune, you had Soul Ring, you got Man of Okay, okay. It wasn't just the dual lands, but still. Uh, I think this is the best core set since Revise. I missed a lot of them, so I could be wrong. Let me know if there was a better set. I know a lot of people like the Core 2015. Was that set better than this one? Or do you think this is the best core set they've done in 25, 30 years? Let me know in the comments. I really appreciate you watching. If you're still watching this long, I hugely appreciate it. Thanks again, guys. You guys take care.